Hey, and welcome to this week's Friday Q&A for DaVinci Resolve on the iPad. Every Friday, I answer your questions. Today, we have 10 questions, so let's jump into that one. The first one, you should stay off of coffee for a few days. I guess some of my videos is very fast, very fast, very fast. No, I will never stop with coffee, at least not for now. I don't think about that. No, no, thanks. Does second monitor work for 2018 and 2020 iPads? That's a very good question, and I will give this question back to the community. I personally think you need to have the studio version. I don't think it's limited to, to the M1 or M2. I have a video here on my channel when you type this in external monitor and in this video I also explain you how to use the external monitor and it works in the studio version only. So the next question is not really a question more a statement and he also bought the course which is amazing thank you so much and he was appreciating all of my videos that I already did on the YouTube channel. Yes that's my strategy I want to give as much value as possible but also currently the DaVinci Resolve iPad Masterclass has more value in it in, than any other Masterclass. I'm not even talking about all the plugins and the tools like the transition pack or the film grain pack or the LUTs pack that you get as well or the, the shortcuts like there's so much the, the complete package without like you know when people say it it is more valuable than when I say it, right? If I say it, it's marketing. But anyway, everybody who is in the masterclass knows that there's a lot of value in it. How do I turn off the sound that appears while passing in through the cursor with the timeline? Annoying. <laughs> That's interesting. I need that one. When it was off, I wanted it back. But how it sounds is called audio rubbing the Ventures off iPad. I made a video about this one. So look into this video here. The, the, the This is the English one. That's the German one. Here, English one. Look into this video. This is where I explain you how you can turn this off or on if you're missing it or if you want to turn it off. Great. Thank you very much for this tip. One question. Can you renderize with multipass with DaVinci Resolve for the iPad? I think I talked about this in one of my Q&A videos already in the past. No, you currently can't. It just crashes. It doesn't work. Maybe in a future update, maybe even with the latest update. But the point is also the last time when I talked about this is currently the M1 is so powerful. The reason why you have multipass is actually that you get better end result. But I haven't really seen any problems with the renders that I had. I could be limited, of course, maybe you have this huge project. But I think the last time I said that too, if you have that huge projects, then maybe you run into other problems on the iPad anyway, because some of the stuff like the Fusion page, not everything is working right now. But this was my opinion. Maybe you have a different opinion. So it's not working right now, but I don't miss it because the M1 is very powerful. Why do you not upload to YouTube Shorts? Good question. I have two answers for that. Number one, I create every day two videos. And now I did this already, like I think today is number two. 210 or something. It's a lot of videos. And at the same time, I also created the masterclass. I don't want to now come complain about this, but I just didn't have the time to create shorts. But then at the same time, I also learned something because as a business owner, you always learn, right? And now I share something that I already shared on my podcast because we talk a lot of business stuff on the German podcast, YouTube shorts. The algorithm is completely separated from the algorithm that we have for long form formats. So even if you have a channel with a million subscribers that you collected with shorts, all the short YouTubers, they don't make money. They don't know how to convert the short viewers into long form viewers. So even if on paper, more people would discover my channel and I would have on paper 10,000, 20,000, 30,000 subscribers, I would have still only the same amount of people who watch my long form videos that will start buying products. So the challenge for us as business owners at the moment is if I make shorts, I have to make sure that the people also come over and watch the long form videos and the statistic currently shows that we are it's a dying project facebook announced something that they made they lost millions millions or maybe even billions just with the short project and i don't think we will have shorts in the future we will see so for now my strategy is to grow organically to at least to like 20 30 thousands from time to time i will drop a short but it will not be my major uh, focus. Dude, I bought the paid version, but not all the tools showed to me. I stayed the same before. How is the solution? So obviously I don't really know what your problem is because um, all the features of the studio version you even have in the free version. But if you try to apply them, then you get the message that you need the studio version. So I think what you meant is probably you saw that some people have the fusion page, the edit page, and you thought if you buy the studio version that you get all the pages. Uh, no, you're wrong. All the other pages are free anyway. You just have to activate them. I have a video here on my channel where I show you how you can unlock all of the pages. Maybe you talk about a specific point, then please comment again and explain exactly what is missing. But if you're talking about the pages and the reason why I answered it this way is because I had many people who bought the studio version because they thought the way to all the pages is the studio version but that's not true the reason we don't have all of the other pages is because blackmagic purposefully only launched the color page 
and the cut page. Those are the two officially launched pages. I mean, I said this already so many times, but of course, people always discover the channel and many of them haven't even realized that we have all the other pages with limitations, but some of the features better than and other worse, but we have to just wait until they develop all of this. And I think even in the past, I explained this a couple of times that the main problem is not even Blackmagic himself, is the problem is that the iPad is limited with the cap cap capacity. So what I, what I mean by this is, for example, some of the libraries for programming that is available in Windows or in Mac is not available on the iPad. So it's not even about programming the stuff correct. It's also that the iPad is limited and some functions don't work that way. So Blackmagic has to either wait until an update comes out and Apple finally says, yep, yeah, now we can use it, or they have to find workarounds, which is sometimes not as simple. Hey, ich mag deine Videos. Bitte könntest du uns zeigen, wie man DCTLs. So this is German, but basically he said, I like your videos. Can you show us how to install DCTL? And every day there is something even I can learn about DaVinci Resolve. DCTL I did not even know what he was talking about. Then I made my research. DCTL is a programming language how you can even optimize and make your own plugins just for DaVinci Resolve. So the most important that I figured out is DCTL only works with the studio version. That's the studio only feature. And the way it works is you have to program it. You have to code it and everything. And so what I now tested, because I will make a video in the future when I dig into this topic more, because I think just that topic alone can be a couple of videos, a video series, but I think it's too advanced for the most view, um, yeah, the, the day to day basic users for DaVinci Resolve. But I also want to answer your question. And I did something very interesting. So I downloaded an example code. And the way it works is you have those DCTL files. And same like on the computer or on the Mac, you have to get those files that you finished programming and you have to copy paste them into the LUTs folder of DaVinci Resolve. So DaVinci Resolve here on the iPad has a folder it's called DaVinci Resolve, this one. And then there is a LUT folder. And in the LUTs, if you remember, even my finished. Um, LUT pack, for example, I created my own folder and now I created a folder DCTL and I copy paste all of them in. So what is not working, if you come now in here, I already did this, but usually when you install LUTs, you can just right click here and say refresh. It doesn't work on the iPad or even on the desktop. You have to re not reinstall, restart DaVinci Resolve. And then, and now here's the thing, under my LUTs, I have now DCTL and I have those DCTL files in it, so I can work with them. Not perfectly, this guy even wrote on this one example code that on Mac there is some issues because the iPad is close to Mac, I have the same issues. There's something I could do. I will not do this now because I'm not sure if this will somehow screw over my iPad. But the most important for this video now is on my example, I could load them and DaVinci Resolve on the iPad recognized it. So it's not limited by the iPad. Now it's the question if your code that you programmed will work or not. But the way you install it is exactly the same like on the desktop. The next two question is basically an update from the last update. So he was now saying in Germany, hey, we can now use all the other languages. And also Carlos said the same, hey, I can now use transcribe with subtitles for my audio, for my language. So with the big update, 18.5, we got a feature, it's called transcribe audio. And I'm now here in the cut page and I come to this icon here, for example, I can create subtitles from audio. And now you can even change languages. When 18.5 came out, we only had link, uh, English. Now you even have German, Spanish, different languages and now you can use this. This is a very good update. Another German comment. Thanks for the short videos that you are making. They are very valuable. Where do I find the blade tool in the edit page? That is a loaded question. <laughs> yes, I edit a lot in the edit page, but the main reason is because I have the keyboard and I use my pencil. And when I do cuts, I use my shortcuts for that. So S, there is no blade tool on the edit page. So if you just want to use the iPad with tool, without a keyboard, then the edit page is not the most convenient um, that you can use. What I would recommend then is to use the cut page and you do the cuts there because you have the blade tool and everything. Or upgrade to a keyboard because you can be so much faster with a keyboard. I get this question all the time. Should I get a keyboard or not? I know the iPad is amazing for just having it in the hand, but I talked about this already in my last Q&A video. I think Final Cut Pro is more optimized for just having it in the hand. But then in the other side, like today, I talked about how we can even use programming language inside of DaVinci Resolve and it works on the iPad. The iPad 
iPad version is the same like the desktop version. We can do so much more. So that's also why I treat it almost like the desktop version because I have all of my shortcuts. So if you want to become very fast, I recommend that you have a keyboard or get the speed editor. With the speed editor, you can also edit very, very fast. And I made a video about this when I un unboxed this one. The cool thing about this is if you buy the speed editor new, you also get a studio license for the desktop, not for the iPad, but for the desktop. So it's kind of, if you want to get the studio license anyway, because it's a one-time payment and then you have it for the rest of your life. I wanted to have it anyway. So this was cool to also have the speed editor that way. So that's it for all the questions from this week. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have an amazing weekend and a nice week next week. If you have any more questions about DaVinci Resolve, just let me know, drop them here in the comments and I will answer them in the next Q&A Friday video next Friday. If you find this helpful, hit like, subscribe, ding -a ding on the bang bang gong and we see us in the next video. I'm Daniel, I'm still daily, still yet, still now, probably this year. Bye. Whew.